As we get older, our bodies begin to feel the effects of years of exercise, hard work and play. In addition to wear and tear, joints can also be affected by diseases such as arthritis. The oh. final result is often debilitating and painful. Joint replacement surgery for your hip or knee can relieve these symptoms and extend your ability to participate in physical activity. Patricia needs a total right knee replacement. Bob needs a total left hip replacement. Both are about to go through the same pre-operative procedure prior to joint replacement surgery. Patricia's journey begins with her first visit to her surgeon. So what we do is we get you into the hospital, we make an incision over the front of your leg, we separate the two bones, and we take a sliver of bone out from the ends of each bone. Wow. It generally is about eight millimeters thick. Wow. We get a saw and we cut the end of the bone to a certain level so that we can replace it accurately with a piece of steel about that size. We measure it to your, to your size and to your specifications and we glue that onto the bone. And we put that on firmly and then hold it in place until the glue, glue sets. On the other half, the shin bone, we take a sliver of bone out and we open up the marrow part and again put a layer of glue on either side of these components and fit that onto the bone and hold it in place until it sets. Hmm. Now we've got two pieces of steel separated by a bit of plastic and that forms your artificial knee joint. You don't have bone rubbing on each other now. Ah, that sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. No more pain. That's correct. The Whitlam Joint Replacement Centre, located at Fairfield Hospital, provides joint replacement surgery for the South West Sydney area. We have six surgeons who perform hundreds of joint replacements each year. We're involved in research aimed at investigating the optimal clinical management of patients having knee or hip replacement surgery. We pride ourselves on our excellent standard of care, great patient satisfaction and low infection rates. Whether you're having a hip or knee replacement, the pre-operative process is the same. All joint replacement patients will attend a pre-operative education class, which helps you to prepare for your surgery. The physiotherapist will discuss the rehabilitation process, including pre-operative exercises, which helps to strengthen your muscles prior to surgery. Your operated leg, so your left leg, and then you'll step with your right leg. The physio will also demonstrate how to use the crutches. Knee crutches, then your operated leg. Excellent. Keep going. This is what a normal hip looks like, okay? The nurse will explain the pre-admission process and, and how you'll be given an operation date, usually two to six weeks following your pre-admission clinic appointment. You need to have your x-rays and your blood tests here today and we will get your results. The nurse will also discuss possible complications and how you can prevent them, as well as how long you'll be in hospital Occupational for. Occupational therapists normally look at how you do your everyday activities and how what we can do to make it... Occupational therapists can recommend equipment or modifications to your home to assist you. They can also train you on different ways to manage everyday tasks. After hip surgery, you need to follow hip precautions to prevent injuring your hip muscles. In general, you need to avoid bending your hip past 90 degrees, twisting your leg inwards or outwards, twisting your upper body, or so crossing your legs. Our social work role here at the hospital is in orthopaedics. We work very closely with the nursing staff, with physiotherapy occupation. Also at the education class, the social worker will discuss the services available to you that may be helpful when you and go we home. also provide you with some support. Sometimes people can get quite nervous and stressed about having to... For some people, the need for surgery can raise feelings of anxiety or concerns about adjusting to different levels of functioning. So if you do live alone, just to think about how you may manage when you go home. Following the education class, you'll go to pathology for blood and urine tests in preparation for surgery. Patricia, when I call out, you take a deep breath in, hold your breath, please. Then, it's on to radiology for a chest x-ray, 
to ensure your lungs are clear for anaesthetic. You'll also have an x-ray of the joint to be operated on. In order to ensure you're fit for your surgery, you'll attend a pre-admission clinic. Part of the success of your surgery depends on how fit you are before your surgery. Bob Harrison's my name, mm -hmm. and I'm looking for, I believe, the pre-admission clinic. Okay. If you just like to go through the double doors. Double doors. Turn to your left, right. and it's on the left-hand side. That's the clinic, isn't that's it? That's the pre-admission clinic. Okay. Well, that's what I'm looking yes. forward okay. to. Okay, through the double doors. Double doors. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thank you. As you enter the hospital and in each ward and clinic area, there's a hand hygiene station. Please ensure you wash your hands with the wash provided. Hello, how are you? Hello. How can I help you? I'm here for the pre-admission clinic. And your name? Patricia Williams. Patricia Williams. Okay, no worries. Just have a seat for me in the waiting room. Okay. I won't be long. Hello. How are you okay. doing? Good, thanks. Uh, and Bob your Harrison. Name? Bob Harrison. That's right. Okay. No worries. Just have a seat for me in the waiting room. I won't be long. Other way. Thank okay. you. See the clerk at the desk when you arrive. You'll be asked to take a seat until your name is called. Mr. Harrison. Mr. Harrison. Hi. Would you like to come with me, please? Yes. When you are called, you'll have an ECG to check your heart. Another nurse will take your blood pressure. She'll also take swabs from your nose and groin. There you are, Patricia. That's to get your body wash. You will need to wash with the antiseptic wash from your neck to your toes every day for three days prior to your operation. You or your family should pay at the cashier in the main foyer and collect the antiseptic from the pre-admissions clerk. You must also bring a list of all your medications so that the doctor can determine if any of your medications need to be stopped prior to your surgery. You'll be given instructions on when to stop medications if required. The registrar will view your x-rays and answer any questions you may have about your surgery. He'll also examine your skin. Skin complaints such as eczema, psoriasis, rashes or ulcers can cause infections after the operation. Your surgery may need to be delayed if you develop a skin condition prior to the operation. Having seen the results of your earlier tests, the anaesthetist will ensure you are well enough for an anaesthetic. The anaesthetist will discuss the different kinds of anaesthetic with you and whether you're suitable for general anaesthetic or spinal anaesthetic. Patients who are having knee or hip replacement will receive a phone call and a letter confirming their operation date. You'll need to ring the day before your surgery to confirm what time to come into the hospital. You may need to arrive as early as 6.30 if your surgery is scheduled for the morning. Hello. Hello darling, it's Mum. I'm just ringing to tell you that I got the letter from the hospital. Now is the time to arrange transport to and from the hospital and the support equipment you'll need, such as toilet aids and shower chairs. It's also time to arrange any community services you may need, such as alternative transport, meals and domestic assistance. On the day of your operation, you may bring a relative or friend with you. You'll usually go to the pre-admission clinic unless you're scheduled for early surgery, in which case someone will meet you in the foyer. Mr. Harrison? Yeah. Mrs. Williamson? A hospital volunteer Taylor, or the ward clerk McKenzie. will take you okay. to the orthopaedic ward. Follow me. All staff, visitors and new patients to the ward are asked to wash their hands before entering to minimise the risk of infection in the hospital. Hi, Hi, Here, you you'll be greeted by the nursing staff morning, and shown to your room. Um, welcome to Ward 2B. Nurses are here ready to uh, take you to your beds and 
We'll be with you very soon. Be all right, okay? Visiting hours while in this ward are between 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m., then 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Please note that no glass vases are allowed in the wards and no flowers may be taken into the acute post-operative unit or APU. One of the nurses who'll be looking after you will orientate you to your room and show you how to use the facilities on the nurse call system. Through this door here we have the toilet. Okay, yes, thank you. And over on the opposite side is the shower. Right. Marie. Hello, hello, Bob. I'd like you to get changed. I'd like you to pop this gown on with the opening down the back, nothing right. on underneath. Okay. And do you have any allergies to anything? Uh, no, I haven't. Not. Okay, then you need to wear the blue hat. Blue. So if you could pop okay. those on for me, and sure. I'll be back in a few moments to finish your admission. Okay, thank okay. you. Oh. Just checking your blood pressure. Okay. Once you're settled, the nurse will take your blood pressure, temperature, and measure your okay, blood I'll oxygen pop level. These white socks on you. As mm. you know, we use these to prevent blood clots. Wearing compression stockings is very important to reduce the risk of blood clotting. Just pop your leg so, for me. This goes on now, but how long do I have to keep it on? You leave these socks on for six weeks. Six weeks. Just while you're not as mobile. Right. Okay. And we make sure they're nice and straight, not folded over, not wrinkled. Uh -huh. And the top's left straight up like that. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 Okay, Bob, we're just going to go through your theatre checklist with you. Okay. So what side are you having on? The nurse on will today? ask you a series of questions from the theatre checklist as an added precaution to ensure that you're the right person for the right operation. Hello, my name's Christine. How are you? I'm fine. You'll be asked these questions again when you go Can into you the operating theatres. Patricia Williams. Okay, Patricia. What operation are we doing for you today? I'm having a knee replacement. A knee replacement? Which side? Right knee. Right side? Okay. Um, are you allergic to anything, Patricia? No, I'm not. And last time you had something to eat and drink? I had a cup of tea before I went to bed last night. Okay, so nothing today? No. Do you have any dentures or loose teeth? I've got partial denture. Okay, any jewellery? No. Okay, I'll just have a look at your armband. Patricia Williams. Okay, I'm just going to show you your consent. So we're having a right turtle knee replacement. Is that your signature? Yes, it is. Okay, so I'll just take you in now. This is the transfer. In the theatre, the anaesthetist will put an oxygen mask on you. I'm just going to hold it lightly on your face, okay? You just need to take some nice gentle breaths in and out. While you're in surgery, your family and friends can go to the hospital cafeteria or visit the cafes and other facilities at the local shopping centre. After the operation, you'll be wheeled to the recovery ward where the staff will monitor you until you wake up. Most people don't remember much about the recovery ward. You'll have a drip to give you fluids and an oxygen mask. This will be changed to a small nasal tube when you wake up. Okay, I'm just going to check your blood pressure. Patients are often taken to the acute post-operative unit where they stay for a okay, day or I'm two. I'm having a look at your leg and your foot here. You'll have a drain to help minimise blood collection around your new joint and a urinary catheter. These will gradually be removed over the next couple of days. After surgery, the operation site will be significantly painful. You'll be able to control your pain with the use of the patient controlled analgesia or PCA. Adequate pain relief helps you to recover faster. So did you call me this morning? Yeah, I did, Harleen. Yeah. How are you? Are you going to be reviewing the patients this morning? Oh, yeah, I'll come on very soon. Okay. Hello, Patricia. My name's Danella. I'm one of the physios. I'm looking after you today. How are you feeling? All right. Let's pull this back. How's the pain? Oh, it's not too bad. Not too bad? Okay, it might be a bit sore now when we start moving. Slowly yeah. try and bring this leg down the side for me. Excellent. Not too painful? No, not okay, really. when you're ready, what I want you to do is push with your hands to sit up. Can you do that? That's Ooh. it. The physiotherapist will assist you to get out of bed and sit in the chair using a walking frame for support. And you can feel the back of the chair at the back of your legs, okay? You can put your hands down yeah. to sit down on the chair. Okay. That's it. Nice and slowly. Oh. Okay. 
Well done. You'll be shown exercises to improve your knee range of motion, Bend that knee. Bend that knee. as well as breathing exercises to keep your lungs clear <laughs> after the anaesthetic. It's very important that your leg remains flat in bed. Do not place a pillow under your knee. Yeah, doing well. Over the next few days, you'll continue to exercise daily to improve your knee range of motion. Doing really well. Have you on the crutches really soon. When you begin using the crutches, you'll probably find it most comfortable to move your crutches forward together first, and then bring your operated leg to the level of your crutches, followed by your unoperated leg. So that's it, then your bad leg and then the crutches. In the war gym, you'll practice on the steps with your crutches to give you more confidence once you're up and about. To go up, Place your unoperated leg, or good leg, up the step first, followed by your operated leg, and lastly That's your crutches. Right. Okay, we'll take a few steps to turn around. To go down the steps, you should reverse the sequence. In reverse when in your bad leg. Place your crutches down the step first, then your operated leg, followed by your unoperated leg. During your stay in hospital, the occupational therapist will recommend equipment to improve your safety and independence once you return home. And you actually put your sock on up here. Right. Once you've placed that all the way up, you can actually make sure that you've got this properly looped around your hands and then lower it onto the floor. Yeah. Then you can wriggle your foot into the sock yeah. and then pull it backwards and up. Do you oh, want to give right? it a try? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yes. so they can help you with... Um, you might be followed up by a social worker to discuss any services or supports you may need to manage everyday tasks, especially if you live alone or have been having difficulties. Okay, so this is all your discharge information. Okay, this Following your knee replacement, you'll be in hospital for about three to five days. You'll be discharged when you're medically fit and the physio has assessed your mobility and is happy that you'll be able to manage at home. You'll need to wear your stockings for six weeks after your operation, day and night. The nurse will give you your appointments and discharge summary for your surgeon and your GP. The GP may remove your stitches or staples 14 days after your surgery. The nurse will also give you your medications, scripts and a spare dressing. It is important corner, to keep your pain so to a minimum so you can continue your exercises at home. If you show any signs of redness, <laughs> swelling, pain or discharge around your wound, see, see your go. GP immediately. So 8.30, is that okay? It's important to continue your exercises once you're home. Walking is good exercise, and using the pedals will help strengthen the muscles around your knee. You'll attend physiotherapy after being discharged home, and the therapist will assist you to progress your exercise program and mobility to enable you to return to normal function. When getting into a car, slide the front passenger seat as far back as possible, and recline the backrest. Remember to take small steps when turning, and before you sit, make sure you can feel the edge of the car behind you. Hold onto fixed areas, like the back of the car seat, and never hold onto the car door, as this may swing and make you unsteady. Driving is not recommended for around six weeks after surgery. Your surgeon will confirm when it's safe for you to resume driving. You'll have another x-ray taken before you go to see your surgeon after six weeks. Alicia, welcome back. It's six weeks now since the it knee is, replacement. It is, yes. Mm. How are you going? I'm feeling a lot better. It's still a little bit stiff and sore sometimes, but much better. You're uh, taking anything for pain now? I take Panadol. How often do you do that? Oh, about three times a day. Three times a day. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you're attending physiotherapy regularly I'm now? I'm doing that.
At six weeks, you may still require the use of a crutch or walking stick and continue to attend outpatient physiotherapy. Once discharged from outpatient therapy, it's important for you to maintain an active lifestyle. A few months after her surgery, Patricia is able to resume the active lifestyle that she used to enjoy. Joint replacement surgery will contribute to Patricia's general health by allowing her to be more physically active for longer.